Share is a tree that grows in wooded savannas of West Africa. Its dried nuts provide butter and vegetable oil after extraction. Share butter is rich in nutrients. It is used a lot in cooking and traditional medicine and cosmetic products. For babies, share butter helps nourish the skin and prevent irritations. By selling share butter, farmers can get good income. However, traditional extraction of share butter doesn't follow required hygiene rules. This results in unsafe butter that can cause illness in consumers. Also, when share kennels are pounded in a mortar, many pieces fall on the ground, which results in large losses. With the old extraction method, the kennels absorbed dirty water from the ground and smoke from the oven gave a bad smell to the butter. It's no longer the case with our new method. Before, our butter was not well appreciated, but now it's consumed by everyone. Some women have even given up groundnut oil in favor of shea butter. Our shea butter is clean and pure. It's better than some industrial oils. It doesn't contain any additives. During churning, women are often distracted and take long breaks. As the pest is already in the transformation process, it returns to its initial state after each break. This reduces the fat percentage. Shear butter can also become oxidized when steel containers are used during extraction. In this video, we will learn how women in the south of Mali have improved the production of shear butter. To have a quality shea butter, it is necessary to wash the kennels and dry them well. Grind the kennels. Churn the paste. Cook the fat. Mix the butter to make it a consistent texture. Good hygiene is required at every step of share butter production. To thoroughly clean the shelled kennels, wash them in water in a plastic or aluminium container. Submerge the kennels in water and clean them using your hands. Change the water and repeat two or three times until the nuts are thoroughly clean. Now, sort the kennels to remove any bad ones. Dry the clean kennels in the sun on a tarpaulin or bags or on a clean drying surface for one day so that they dry well. If the kennels are not well dried after the first day, continue drying them the next day. The kennels are hard to grind if they are not well dried. Poor drying also reduces the amount of butter, as one woman processor explains. If the kennels are not well dried, the paste will not be fine and smooth when milled. A fine paste produces more butter. So you need to dry the kernels thoroughly to produce much butter. After the kernels are thoroughly dried, grind them in the meal to get a fine paste. You can also hand pound the kernels in a mortar, but this method is less profitable as some pieces of kernel will fall on the ground. This results in losses and require a lot of physical efforts. In addition, the paste will not be very smooth. After grinding, the paste becomes hot as it has come out of the machine. So, 
let it cool before churning it. Women in the south of Mali usually let the paste cool overnight before churning it. We let the hot paste cool to make churning easier. If it is not cool, it will not be consistent during churning. The paste will melt and it will be hard to get the fat incorporated. You will have the impression there is oil on top. But if it cools fast, churning will be easy and all the fat is available. To make sure the butter is clean requires good personal hygiene. Wear clean clothing, cover your hair and wear a clean scarf over your head when preparing shea butter. Remove all your jewelry and thoroughly clean your hands. Put the cooled paste in a clean plastic or aluminum container. But make sure you do not overfill your churning container as you will need some space to churn the paste. It is best not to fill more than half of the container with paste. As the paste is a bit firm, add small amounts of lukewarm water to make it easier to mix. Make sure you do not add too much water. During churning, as soon as the pastry becomes more consistent, we add a little bit of lukewarm water so that the fatty substance appears all white on top. If you don't add lukewarm water, it becomes red. If you add too much lukewarm water, the fatty substance will start melting. And if it melts, you will not have the most amount of butter. During the cold season, the cooled paste is harder. If this is the case, you can add some boiling water. Churn the paste with your hands for about an hour to extract the fatty substance. When the paste becomes white and more consistent, this means you have extracted the oil. Now, add more lukewarm water. The fatty substance will float and impurities will settle to the bottom of the container. Do not overfill the container as the fatty substance may be spilt on the ground. Remove the white fatty substance and put it in another container. Add some water again and repeat this process two or three times. On the final time, make balls from the fatty substance to help reduce the amount of water and the bitter taste. Test the fatty substance to make sure it has no bitter taste. We wash the fatty substance many times to remove the taste of the tree from the butter. The fatty substance has a slightly bitter taste because shea itself has this taste. So the oil is washed several times to improve its taste. Now, put a clean empty pot on the fire. Put the fatty substance in the pot to cook. The size of the pot depends on the amount of fatty substance to be cooked. Never fill the pot completely and do not close it as the oil can spill on the ground when it starts boiling which results in losses. Also, to prevent the boiling oil from pouring on the ground, Use a spatula and a ladle to stir it during the cooking process. The cooking allows water to evaporate and impurities to settle to the bottom of the pot. The cooking time depends a lot on the strength of the fire. Cooking ends when a white foam appears on top and the oil turns yellow. If oil contains water, you hear noise. And if it doesn't contain water, you don't hear anything. You will then know that it is ready. 
Remove the pot from the fire and let it cool as it can cause injuries when it is hot. Using a ladle, transfer oil from the pot to another container while leaving the impurities on the bottom of the pot. Add clean water to this separated oil as part of the cleaning process. Now separate the oil from the water. Put it in another clean pot and put it on the fire to cook again to make it clean and healthy. After boiling, the white form appears on top of the yellow oil. This means that the oil is now cooked. Remove the pot from the fire and let it cool a little bit before filtering the oil using a clean cloth or a sieve. Put the well-filtered oil in a plastic or aluminium container. Your shea butter is now ready to be used. Keep it in a room to let it cool completely and cover it with a lid. To give your butter a consistent texture before storing, stir it with a spatula until you are satisfied. Women in the south of Mali let their butter cool overnight before stirring it. We stir the butter to give it a better consistency by breaking up the lumps and in order to be able to put more butter in one container as this provides more weight. Let us sum up what we have learned. Shea butter is used in cooking, traditional medicine and as a cosmetic product. It is an important source of income for women farmers. Good hygiene is important when making shea butter. When making shea butter, avoid using steel containers as they can oxidize your butter and cause illness. Wash the kernels thoroughly and dry them in the sun before grinding as improperly dried kernels produce less butter. Grind the kernels in a meal to increase the yield of butter. Cook and filter the oil well to remove any impurities. Stir the cooled butter to give it a better consistency before storing. By producing improved share butter, you will get more money.